Good evening, Bahamas. Coming up tonight, our one-on-one -on -one with Brent Simonet on why he resigned from cabinet. A teen boy killed in a hit and run. EPL reporting an island-wide power outage across New Providence, plus 9000 a month on rent to house the new governor general. News is brought to you by Alive. Welcome to Our News and thanks for joining us. I'm Kyle Joaquin. St. Anne's MP Brent Simonet explaining his resignation from the Minister's Cabinet, saying it wasn't due to tension with the Prime Minister, but rather a much simpler issue. This as he denies that his resignation had anything to do with increased tension over the award of contracts to Bahamas Hot Mix. People who know me, know me. Those who don't know me, mm -hmm. Gonna, they can say what they want to say. Right? Former Minister for Financial Services, Trade and Industry and Immigration, Brent Simonet, says when it came to his life in the public eye and his wealth, he never hid anything. In an interview with our news team, Simonet said at the beginning of the Minister Administration's term in office, he made it clear he had no plan to remain a cabinet minister past his 65th birthday, which is in December. For me, December 2nd or the end of the year was uh, absolute maximum outside. Dr. Minnes, the Prime Minister and I talked and we, we came to the conclusion or the agreement that it would be better for the new minister to start with a full budget year as opposed to coming halfway through. Just two days after tendering his resignation as a cabinet minister, Simonet says he hears all the speculation about his reasons for returning to politics, but that at no time did he think to hide his wealth. I'm the wealthiest MP. I don't hide from that. Uh -huh. But one thing you can look up in the press or anywhere in the, in the public life any company that I have an involvement with, on the list of shareholders, my children or my trust or my wife or myself are fully disclosed on the front. I don't hide behind five nominee shareholders like other people do. There has long been controversy over Simonet's familial involvement in Bahamas hot mix. Back in 2001, Simonet resigned as chairman of the airport authority amid controversy over a contract awarded to Bahamas Hot Mix for work done at Lyndon Pindling International Airport without approval of the board of directors. He explains that he still has regrets over what transpired moments after. I have deep regrets, and that's why I said something earlier, that um, I kept quiet, and the government never explained this. The government of the day never explained the situation. Yes, I do. So that's your regret? That's a, that's a very deep regret. The company was recently awarded contracts by the Water and Sewage Corporation for work in Long Island and Crooked Island, as well as a $20 million contract for rehabilitation work on a runway and taxiway at Linden Pendling International Airport. Simonet has said that he is not a shareholder of Bahamas Hot Mix, but admitted that his children's trust has shares in the company. For instance, I will tell you one, one bit about the Hot Mix contract. Not a single one of those was before the cabinet, the government of the Bahamas. Not a one. So I, the rest I'll deal with later. Not a one. So, so, like, the, so, so like those water contracts. Never would came. They been, never come to cabinet. Would you have had any involvement or any knowledge never of came. the award of those contracts? Uh, one of them I read about in the newspaper the first time. That's it. Yeah. Simonet says he has plans to continue his term in Parliament as the MP for the Saint Anne's constituency, but as he prepares to depart frontline politics. Simonet says he hopes to see the issue of race be dealt with, as it has only gotten worse. I think this country, and I hope they do, and I hope if I do nothing else, I uh, precipitate or uh, cause it to happen, has to have a discussion about race, about wealth, and about politics. Unfortunately for me, oh, if you want to throw in the Bay Street Boys and whatever else, I ro rolled up in me is the epitome of everything people hate, like, despise, whatever word. So I've already received several hate, call, a hate call. The person calls up and says, I hate you. And I told them, ma'am, I don't hate you. I don't hate anyone um, and whatever. Well, PLP leader Philip Davis is weighing in on Simonette's resignation, calling for the St. Anne's MP and the prime minister to be open about it. Georgia Bain reports.
Opposition leader Philip Brave Davis weighed in on several issues at the party's monthly press conference, including the recent resignation of former cabinet minister Brent Simonette, who justified stepping down because of his upcoming 65th birthday. But according to Davis, he believes that there's more to it. We believe it's something more deeper than that. Uh, we, it's, as I said, it, to me, the resignation is, is a distraction from the larger picture. I, I, will, I will be supporting the, uh, supporting the request for an inquiry and a complete understanding as to why it was that hot mix was awarded those contracts. Simonet also said that he thinks that the race issue has gotten worse in the last two or three years in the country and that that has to be dealt with. Davis says that the issue has nothing to do with race. I don't know why Brent would con continually push this race card because as far as I know, he is a quarter black. It's more than that. More than that. Yeah. Right. So, so the question of the race card, and every time there is any conversation or dialogue on the premise of where we black people would have come from, and how and what we would have done in this country. The, the issue of race arises. Davis said while the news of Simonet's resignation was more than welcomed, he still believes that the prime minister must explain awarding government contracts to Bahamas Hot Mix. The PLP leader also demanded that the lease agreement for the rental space in the town center mall be made public. These are the kinds of deals that the phrase conflict of interest was invented to describe. Earlier this year, the government relocated the general post office to the town center mall, which Simonet is a part owner of. Reporting for our news, I'm Georgie Bain. Well, acting Prime Minister Peter Turncrest is coming to Simonet's defense, insisting there is no shred of evidence to support claims that Simonet used his political post to obtain government contracts. Jasmine Brown has that angle. We spoke to several of Simonet's cabinet colleagues today, and they all insisted that they were not surprised by his resignation. Uh, and so this is not surprising in that regard. Um, and, uh, you know, again, I commend him uh, for recognizing and, and, and stepping aside to give uh, a younger minister an opportunity uh, to contribute. Um, again, um, you know, it's, it's unfortunate that circumstances uh, 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 that are unrelated um, are being uh, conflated into this, this uh, uh, development. And according to the acting PM, those unfortunate issues include the widespread discussion on the award of contracts to companies Simonet has declared his family has an interest in. Turnquest swiftly dispelled the controversial claims, saying they are not only unfounded but also unfair. Again, uh, as far as I am aware, uh, never once, uh, certainly, uh, you know, again, never once uh, has Minister Simonet asked any minister uh, or in, in in, uh, in prevailed on any uh, decision uh, with respect to any of these contracts. They've won them as far as I understand, fair and square. As far as I'm aware, there was never any instance where Minister Simonet or former Minister Simonet made any intervention or uh, asked for any favorable consideration with respect to any project uh, that has been awarded. Uh, and I think that is a very, very unfair label that has been put on him. Uh, it is not backed up by any shred of fact. The acting PM also suggested that some may be targeting Simonet unfairly. Very unfortunate that uh, we as a community have not grown and matured to the point uh, where we can see successful people uh, uh, advancing and celebrate that success, um, you know, regardless of, of what the background is. The fact of the matter is these companies uh, employ Bahamians. Uh, and, and the suggestion that because he has decided to uh, enter public life, that his family ought to suffer, or the employees of these uh, uh, entities ought to suffer, I, I think is a very disingenuous and a dangerous uh, uh, position for people to take. Simonet's fellow Free National Movement MPs are also weighing in. Politically, not surprised. But um, personally, you know, when you look at the personality and the contributions that Mr. Simonet would have made, I guess you, there, there would be an, an air of um, surprise. That when we feel deep within that it is our time to move on, that we make the right decision and move on, and not, to, not to just continue to labor knowing that, uh, you know, mentally, that you're, you're not up for it. And so I wish him the very best. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown.
Well, Yamakra MP Ellsworth Johnson was sworn in as the new Minister of Financial Services, Trade and Industry and Immigration during a brief ceremony at Government House this morning. Johnson, who previously served as State Minister for Legal Affairs, was sworn in two days after St. Anne's MP Brent Simonet resigned. While he declined to speak about the controversy behind the resignation and his subsequent appointment, Johnson did say he was honored by the opportunity to serve. Thank God. And as Solomon did, ask him for his wisdom, knowledge and understanding uh, to serve the people of the Bahamas in the best way that I can that would bring honor to him. I would like to thank the Prime Minister of the of the Bahamas through the people of the Bahamas for his confidence in appointing me to this position. Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis, who is currently in St. Lucia, said in a statement that he is confident that Johnson will work diligently to help to secure and promote the financial services sector. Johnson said he plans on hitting the ground running. In terms of immigration, uh, we're dealing with human life. Persons immigrating to and from the Bahamas. Uh, the purpose there is to continue the work that was uh, started by Mr. Simonet to fully digitize the immigration department. I would like to commend those officers who have been working tirelessly, tirelessly uh, to protect the borders of the Bahamas. In other news, a teenage boy is dead tonight after he was struck and killed by a man reportedly driving a Ford F-150 through a corner off Carmichael Road. Police now say they have a pretty good description of the man they are looking for. The family and friends of 15-year-old Leo Dorsley inconsolable on the scene Tuesday morning as police begin their investigation into the hit and run that left the teen boy dead. He had reportedly just left home just before walking along Unison Road off Carmichael Road when police say he was struck by a truck. We believe that the male responsible is a black male believed to be in his late 30s um, to early 40s. And like I indicated earlier, it's believed to be a black or gray F-150 type truck. But what has baffled cops is this witness account that the driver is believed to have stopped and looked at the victim. We believe that the driver was aware that he had struck the individual. How? He stopped, he got out of the vehicle. We believe that he checked on the, the young male. He got in his truck and he took off. <laughs> On scene, the boy's family members pleaded with officers to look deeper into the matter as they couldn't believe someone would accidentally hit their loved one, check on him, and just pull off. Superintendent Marino Hines spoke with the teen's parents on the side just before briefing the media. He said while the matter has been classified as a hit and run, it is also a crime seeing that the driver left the scene. Actually, the technical terminology is failing to remain stationary once you would have physically left the, what we call the locus, the crime scene, it becomes an offense. Meanwhile, the boy's body lie in the grass near the colorful wall of a home. Police now making the familiar call for any information and sending an appeal out for motorists and pedestrians to exercise caution. We're saying to um, all of our citizenry that where there are darker streets, it is advisable to wear light colored clothing to walk with adults and to watch out for the vehicles because you cannot assume that a vehicle can see you. So we want you to put yourself in the best possible position to arrive at your destination safely. A man who was recently released from prison was shot and killed today just off Ragged Island Street. Officers say while those assailants were fleeing from the scene, they hit a child believed to be about five years old. We know that a young man was standing on the corner of Ragged Island Street and Andros Avenue when a gray or silver vehicle pulled up. The occupants of the vehicle opened fire in his direction. He was able to run a short distance. He was hit about the body. He collapsed and was later pronounced deceased. Uh, we know that as the vehicle was leaving the scene, a child was hit. We don't have the uh, condition of the child at this time, but we do have officers uh, in search of that information. Uh, the child was taken from, from the scene uh, to a medical facility. Officers did not give an update on the condition of the child. Police press liaison Shanty Notes added that they are working this case in isolation and could not confirm if it was connected to any of the recent shooting incidents. 
Still to come, New Providence hit by an island-wide blackout. Plus, government to spend $9,000 a month on the new governor general's rent. Stay tuned.